so let's see there's a there there are water molecules being formed but the number of those water molecules will be too less to come and attack on this carbon there are other alcohols as well so one of the possibility would be one this alcohol can come and attack over this plus charge so what you would get is ch3 ch2 and this oxygen and oxygen will have a plus charge because this oxygen will give its electron to this c plus and then this plus charge can be easily be dispensed with by removing of hydrogen so you will get a ether diethyl ether so this hydrogenation dehydration process can also result in ether if if the other method of elimination is not occurring and we'll discuss over after studying the whole reaction when ether formation of ether will be dominant but this is one of the possibility and i'm showing you in advance when we study the chapter ether this will be the one of the method of creation of ether right but here we are not interested in the creation of ether here we want to form a alkene so how alkene will be formed so what would happen third step third step basically has to be a acid base reaction now a base has to be there in the system and i have told you a base is something which reacts with hydrogen so if a hydrogen is abstracted from this carbon then this carbon will generate a negative charge and that negative charge is actually a completely filled orbital here we have a completely empty orbital so electronic transition can take place from completely filled orbital to completely empty orbital and a bond can be formed between these two carbon or to say just plus minus will form a bond so ch2 ch2 will be forming a bond and this base and hydrogen abstracted from here will form bh fine now this is what we want and this has to occur and we will see how can we dominate this step so that we can avoid the formation of ether but this is the mechanism and the reaction condition will discuss in a while but this is in the three steps which are involved in the dehydration reaction the first step would be protonation second step removal of water and the third step is acid base reaction now this base is there remember this hydrogen is coming out of a acid suppose there's a acid ha now it ionizes as a minus and h plus now this h plus comes in the first step protonate the alcohol and the, this a minus comes in the third step acting as a base and that base abstracts hydrogen in case we have sulfuric acid now this h2so4 will ionize to form h plus and hso4 minus so that h plus abstracted from h2so4 would come out in the first step to protonate the alcohol and this hso4 minus will come as a base in the third step to abstract the hydrogen so this base and this h plus is coming out of the acid and these are the three steps involved in dehydration reaction now let's elaborate the discussion and let me tell you that this alkene is thermodynamically less stable than this alcohol now why so because if you look closely from alcohol to generate this alkene we have broken two bonds the first bond was broken in the second step and the second step is the rds of the reaction and this you have to know RDS is a slow step. Slow step is the most difficult step. The most difficult step is the one in which bond is broken. The one in which bond is formed is a fast step. If you look at the first step, a bond has been formed between oxygen and hydrogen, so it will be a fast step. Protonation will be a fast step. In the second step, bond has been broken. A unstable intermediate is formed. It's a slow step, and this is the RDS. And in the third step, again a bond has been broken, but simultaneously a bond is also being formed. so again it will be a relatively much faster step this is the rds a bond has been broken in the second step between carbon and oxygen and a bond has been broken in third step between carbon and hydrogen two bonds are broken now in return one bond is being formed between carbon and carbon the bond which has been broken are sigma bond between carbon oxygen and carbon hydrogen the bond which is being formed is a pi bond between carbon and carbon so you get one pi bond in return of two sigma bond so you can you get a effectively one unstable bond in return of two stable bonds so that makes the system unstable energy wise this will be higher 
so it will be unstable so thermodynamically alkene is less stable than alcohol so the question is then why at all is it formed so the answer would comes from thermodynamics so i'm going to discuss a little bit of thermodynamics of this reaction because that is important as a concept and that will be utilized in numerous reaction that are yet to come so let's discuss this concept here itself okay i'm going to rub this out and these are three steps involved in the dehydration so this is important when you write the mechanism right and before rubbing it out let me tell you when a plus charge has been formed it is a it is a carbocation and this carbocation can undergo rearrangement and this you have to bear in mind whenever a pure carbocation is formed in any of the reaction that is free for migration there will be rearrangement and the carbocation will rearrange to form the most stable carbocation now here i have taken the simple of the simplest cases and uh, if even if you do a migration a plus charge will come here and the carbocation will remain identical so there is no possibility of migration here just to avoid that migration and to understand the mechanism i have taken a simple case but later on when we are going to solve problems there will be possibility when this carbocation can rearrange and then we have to look for the most stable carbocation so this is one of the thing that will creep in next when we start solving problems but nevertheless these are the three steps involved in dehydration process now let's discuss the thermodynamics of this now in the thermodynamics you have this very important famous common trivial formula delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s and delta g is giving the change in gibbs free energy and when delta g is negative then the reaction is spontaneous now in this reaction energy has to be given as we have taken heat and as we are seeing that two stable bond has been broken and one stable unstable bond pi bond is being formed so energy wise alkene will be having a higher energy provide that higher energy heat has to be given so delta h will be positive fine delta h will be positive now delta s delta s is change in entropy now if you see you have a alcohol and as a product you are getting a alkene and water two molecules out of one molecule so number of molecules are increasing so entropy will increase so delta s is positive temperature in kelvin scale is always positive so this t delta s term is positive now at lower temperature t delta s term would be smaller and delta s term will be bigger so delta h minus t delta s will be positive a bigger number minus a smaller number net delta g would be positive so when delta g is positive then the reaction will not be spontaneous that means the reaction will not occur by itself that means reaction will not occur so dehydration is not going to take place so alkene will not be formed then what would happen what will form now this carbocation if you remember in the second step of removal of water has been formed now the next step cannot occur because alkene will not be formed because the delta g of the reaction is coming out as positive then ether will be formed as i have shown you before right but if the temperature is high if the temperature is high then t delta s term would be considerably large now this term would become bigger and delta h will be smaller so a small number minus a bigger number will give you a negative number so delta g will overall become negative and now the reaction starts to become spontaneous that means dehydration reaction is not spontaneous at lower temperature but it becomes spontaneous at higher temperature that's why the temperature has to be high if you don't give high temperature then alkene will never be formed instead ether will be formed so but if we give higher temperature then delta g for this reaction starts to become negative and the delta g for the reaction of ether as a product would be lower a less negative number than the delta g for this reaction so this reaction will dominate and predominantly we will get alkene as the final product so for dehydration temperature has to be high this is the crux of the discussion if you don't give high temperature alkene will not be formed a high temperature is around 160 to 180 degrees celsius this is good enough for unstable alkenes you have to keep it greater than 200 degrees celsius depending upon the kind of alkene you are getting 
So generally, 160 to 180 degrees Celsius will be the temperature for dehydration reaction. Fine. So this is the thermodynamic aspect of dehydration reaction, and uh, we know the mechanism as well.